Hi, my name is Basir. In this video, I'll be teaching you about valence bond theory from chapter 8, chemical bonding, class 10, Telangana state syllabus. To describe covalent bonding, a quantum mechanical model called valence bond theory has been suggested by Linus Pauling in the year 1954. It says that when two atoms come close to each other, the outermost orbitals containing unpaired electrons of opposite spin overlap. And when that happens, the unpaired electrons of opposite spin from both the atoms, they get paid. And these paid electrons are attracted by the nucleus of both the atoms. That binds the two atoms together. This overlap can happen in two ways. The overlap can happen along the internuclear axis. The overlap which happens along the internuclear axis gives a stronger sigma bond. And the overlap that happens sideways gives a weaker pi bond. To understand this, let us consider my two palms as two orbitals. If the orbitals overlap end to end, then the bond formed is known as a sigma bond. The extent of overlap decides the strength of the bond. If the overlap is more, meaning if the orbitals fall on each other to a greater extent, then the bond formed is strong. If the orbitals overlap on each other to a less extent, then the bond formed is weak. So the bond that is formed by overlapping of orbitals along the internuclear axis end to end or head on is known as a sigma bond. What do you mean by internuclear axis? A uh, internuclear axis is nothing but an imaginary line that joins the nucleus of both the atoms. The second type of overlap is sideways. If the two orbitals are not overlapping end to end and if they are overlapping sideways then the bond formed is known as a pi bond. Pi bond is weak because the extent of overlap is not much. In a sigma bond the extent of overlap is more meaning the orbitals fall on each other to a greater extent that is the reason sigma bond is strong while a pi bond on, in a pi bond, the orbitals overlap sideways and the extent of overlap is not more. That's the reason a pi bond is a weak bond. Sigma bond is also stronger for one more reason because in a sigma bond, the orbitals overlap along the internuclear axis. The paired electrons are attracted by the nucleus of both the atoms and that is the other reason why a sigma bond is a stronger bond. I'll read this out for you. The sigma bond is stronger because the electron pair shade is concentrated more between the two nuclei due to end to end or head on overlap and attracted to both the nuclei. The pi bond on the other hand gives a weaker bond due to the lateral overlap. Lateral overlap means they overlap sideways. They don't overlap end to end, they overlap sideways which is not to a greater extent. So the extent of overlap is not much. They don't fall on one another to a greater extent. They just fall a little on one another. That is the reason a pi bond is a weaker bond. To understand this concept a little better, let us consider the formation of chlorine molecule. We know that chlorine atomic number is 17. Electronic configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3px2, 3py2, 3pz1. I'm sure you know how to write down the electronic configuration. Again, if you are not familiar, I suggest you to please watch my video on structure of atom chapter 6. What information can we, can we get from the electronic configuration of chlorine here? We see that chlorine has three orbits. This one that you see here is the principal quantum number is used to denote the principal quantum number. So this one is the first orbit. In first orbit, we have only S subshell. This two that you see here, this two, this two and this two that you see here, this is the second orbit. In second orbit, you have two subshells, S and P. This three that you see here, three, three, three and three. This three that you see here, this is our third orbit. So in chlorine, the outermost orbit is the third orbit. and in chlorine, we see that there is one unpaired electron in 3pz orbital. There is one unpaired electron in 3pz orbital. And p orbital, we know that the shape of the p orbital is dumbbell. Dumbbell, right? So, 3p orbital, which has an unpaired electron, is dumbbell in shape and it has one unpaired electron. The other chlorine atom also will have a similar st story. It will also have one unpaired electron in 3pz orbital. So that is the 3p orbital for the other chlorine atom. 
it ha also has one unpaired electron both the electrons are of opposite spin so these two orbitals which have unpaired electron they overlap each other meaning they fall on each other end to end and this gives us a sigma bond which is again a stronger bond let us now consider the formation of nitrogen molecule we know that the the atomic number of nitrogen is 7 so it has the electronic configuration 1s2 2s2 2px1 2py1 2pz1 from this we see that nitrogen has two orbits right this one that you see here this is our first orbit this 2 2 2 2 that you see here this is the second orbit right and in the second orbit is the outermost orbit in chlorine and we see that chlorine has one unpaid electron each in 2px 2py 2pz so 2px 2py 2pz they have one unpaid electron in each of those orbitals and we know that p orbital the shape of the p orbital is dumbbell right uh, let me first draw the axis for you the x axis the y axis and the z axis you can think of the axis in this way i thought that will, this will be a good idea to, to explain you the uh, axis uh, let us say this is our x axis and that's our y axis and this is our z axis we see that the x axis y axis and the z axis they are perpendicular to each other meaning they make 90 degree angle with each other so that's the x axis that's the y axis and that's the z axis we have drawn 2p x along the x axis 2py along the y axis and 2pz along the z axis now the other nitrogen atom will also have a similar story it will also have three unpaired electrons each in 2px 2py and 2pz orbital right so this diagram is of the other nitrogen atom now when these two nitrogen atoms they come close to each other the outermost orbitals which have unpaired electrons they overlap 2px and 2px they overlap end to end giving rise to a sigma bond which is a stronger bond 2py and 2py they cannot overlap end to end they can overlap sideways because 2py and 2py they are parallel to each other this 2py and this 2py they are parallel to each other so they cannot overlap end to end though they overlap sideways giving rise to a pi bond in the same manner 2pz and 2pz they are also parallel to each other they are also parallel to each other so they cannot overlap end to end they overlap sideways giving rise to a pi bond so nitrogen has multiple bonds it has one sigma bond the nitrogen molecule has multiple bonds it has one sigma bond which is between 2px and 2px orbital and two pi bonds and two pi bonds always remember when we have multiple bonds in a molecule the first bond will always be a sigma bond a pi bond cannot exist independently meaning a pi bond cannot formed without a sigma bond so the so if a molecule has multiple bonds the first bond has to be a sigma bond the first bond has to be a sigma bond and the other bonds will be pi bonds meaning the orbitals overlap sideways let us also consider the formation of oxygen molecule oxygen atomic number 8 electronic configuration 1s2 2s2 2p2 2py1 2pz1 we see that oxygen has one unpaired electron in 2py and one unpaired electron in 2pz orbital so what do you think will happen how many bonds will oxygen form oxygen has two unpaired electrons so it can form two bonds oxygen form a double bond so when it forms two bonds the first bond obviously will be a sigma bond and the other bond will be a pi bond always remember only unpaired electrons take part in bonding nitrogen has three unpaired electrons so it was able to form three bonds it could form one pi bond and one sigma bond and two pi bonds so all together it has three bonds oxygen on the other hand it has two unpaired electrons so it can form two bonds the first bond will obviously be a sigma bond by end to end overlap of orbitals the second bond will be a pi bond formed by side to side overlap of orbitals i hope you are clear with this concept in the next video i'll teach you about hybridization in the light of valence bond theory 
I'll talk about SP hybridization, SP2 hybridization, SP3 hybridization and most probably the next video will be the last video in, 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 in this series. These charts have been prepared by Sumaya and Mariam. Video editing is done by Faisal Khan. I'll see you all in the next video. Until then, goodbye.